In this module of Steps to Success in Grant Fundraising, we will help you better understand what grant funding is. You will learn what makes it grant funding, who gives grants, and the different restrictions they have. But why is this important? It is important so that you can better target your grant fundraising efforts. Smaller charities spend at least 35% of the grant funding they receive applying for more grant funding and between a third and a fifth of grant applications made aren't even eligible. Better understanding what grant funding is will help you target your efforts and have a higher chance of success. It will also make sure you receive grants that meet and don't create funding need. So what is grant funding? Simply put, it is a mechanism of gifting money to an organisation or individual. According to Charity Sorg, that's the standard of recommended practice, accounting and reporting for charities set out by the Charity Commission. A distinguishing feature of a grant is that it is a formal offer of funding in the form of an agreement. This agreement has to be accepted before the grant officially transfers to the charity. Funding received as a grant has impact on how it is accounted for and used in your charity and there are specific regulations both for those giving and receiving the money. So if we know what it is, what more is there to know? You apply, you get an award, you spend it within the conditions. But grant funding is such a broad mechanism and there are lots of variables. When looking at any individual grant, the most important question to ask is, is this right for your charity? We will now help to build your understanding of grants to help you answer this question. There are three variables for grant funding we need to understand. First, who gives grants? Then, what is the purpose of the grant? And finally, what are the conditions attached to it? We are going to start by looking at the conditions of a grant, as this will have the most fundamental impact on whether a grant is suitable for your charity's funding need. To think about the different conditions on grants and the impact they have on your charity, we will look at grant funding as a spectrum. Along one axis, we have grant conditions ranging from none to very strict conditions. Along the other axis, we have the funding amount from low, say £50, to multi-million awards often made over a number of years. You might expect that there is a clear correlation between amount and conditions. The more you receive, the more conditions there are. But this isn't always the case. Most large grants are restricted and come with conditions. But there are a number of funders who particularly support smaller charities with grants that are significant to those charities to help them develop and they are largely unrestricted. Similarly, we might expect smaller amounts to have fewer restrictions, a thank you or an acknowledgement in annual accounts. But we know that some small grants have really disproportionate expectations and conditions. In reality, the conditions and amount can be unexpected, so it is important to understand the conditions, what they mean and the risk they present to your charity. There are four common areas of conditions. Expenditure, what it can be spent on. Time, whether it must be spent in a specific time frame. Performance, how much of something you must deliver or targets you must reach in terms of impact. And manage funding, the need to have other funds in place. It can be helpful to consider these conditions in terms of restricted and unrestricted income. Firstly, unrestricted. It can be used for anything that is required to run your charity so that you can deliver your mission and purpose. You might be asked to report on funding. For larger amounts, you might be expected to have a plan on how the funding will help the charity develop. For smaller amounts, updates are often appreciated but not required. Always check what the funder expects or would like to see. These funders tend to focus on relationships, so take the opportunity to develop one. On the other side is restricted income. It must be spent for the specific purpose it is given and often in line with an agreed budget. And you will see the conditions outlined previously. Match funding, the need to secure other funding before the grant's released. Performance expectations, what you must achieve to be awarded the funding and time restrictions, particularly if the funder wants you to deliver specific objectives as part of their broader programme of work. It is important to consider whether these restrictions allow you to deliver effectively 
and how much they are enforced or whether they can be negotiated, particularly timescales. Some can be short and can be an unnecessary risk for your organisation to recruit, train and deliver safely, or they can distract from other work. And some performance expectations can make the funding riskier. If you don't meet them, you might not receive the funding, even though you have still incurred costs. Now we will look at who makes grants. Like all things in grant fundraising, it doesn't always fit into neat boxes, but understanding the five main, five main types of organisations will help you make better decisions about grant funding. The first type of organisation we will look at is trusts and foundations. This can be the most difficult to categorise, but with approximately 8,500 distributing grants in the UK, it is important to understand them. They are registered charities with a private, independent and sustainable source of income that might be from investments, family wealth or for corporate foundations from their profit. Their main activity is to distribute funds to organisations to further their own charitable objectives. Broadly, there are two types of foundations, family and personal foundations and corporate foundations. Family and personal foundations are set up by philanthropists who want to promote the welfare of others by donating money to good causes. Some of these are newer as a way to manage wealth and some have been around for a long time, continued by generations of the family. Corporate foundations will want to ensure commitment to social good and be able to, to more effectively demonstrate their positive impact on community and society. What they give really varies. 90% of grants distributed by this group come from just 300 charities, with the top five gifting a significant proportion of this. Smaller charitable trusts may exist to just support one charity, and others may give a few larger awards. Others still might give more to more charities, but make smaller grants. Placing these on our grant funding spectrum, we have differentiated between the top 300 foundations, and other family and corporate foundations. This is because the top 300 are more likely to have formal programmes and application processes and can be very different to smaller foundations, which are more akin to major donor fundraising. Given the scope of trusts and foundations, it is not surprising that they cover the full grant funding spectrum. Next, we will look at national lottery distributors. There are six bodies which distribute money raised by the players of the National Lottery operating in England. They fund projects and activities that transform communities, protect heritage and enrich lives through arts, sports and culture. The UK government oversaw the establishment of these bodies and monitors them. These are the six distributors for England. Some you will be familiar with and may have been funded by, most likely the Community Fund. But don't discount them all. Arts Council distributed the Thriving Communities Fund in 2021 for social prescribing activities and Sport England distributes funds to organisations tackling inequalities in health through activity. As with others, lotteries may give funding in most parts of our grant funding spectrum. They are less likely to have strict conditions for small amounts though and have grants specifically for smaller charities which are more accessible. Government departments will regularly make grant funding available to address particular areas of priority. These funds are usually accessed through distribution partners who have the right reach with applicants, organisations like Homeless Link. These funds are usually restricted, time limited and often with clear monitoring and performance expectations. Central government grants can help to increase capacity and address specific needs locally. Grants from central government are usually stricter in what they can be spent on and how you deliver against them. They tend to be for smaller amounts, but can come with significant time restrictions, which can be risky. We have classified statutory partners as separate to government grants because they are usually accessed differently and for smaller amounts. These grants are made by local authority directorates, district councils and NHS partners to address particular areas of local priority. You might have seen community chess grants or similar from your district council, council or health grants from the ICS. Often local or district authorities will run their own grant process or they might partner with a local community foundation. 
As with central government funds, these are usually restricted, time limited to deliver against a specific strategy, priority or programme. The amount available through these grants is often smaller, but still with restrictions and monitoring expectations. The final group we will look at are other distributors and independent organisations, which might include profit for purpose organisations like the Energy Saving Trust or charities like Mind and Homeless Link. They typically have a broader role than just grant giving, and often they will have received the funding from another source, a grant, a corporate partner, a government partner or a local authority. As with many others, they are usually distributing funds for a specific programme or project. They might be looking for partners to deliver a specific project locally on their behalf. They are more likely to be restricted and have expected outcomes and outputs or deliver in a specific way. The amount available through these grants is often smaller, but still with restrictions and monitoring expectations. Whilst these are the five main funders, they will often collaborate and understanding the real source of income might help you better understand expectations and likely conditions. For example, central government might partner with trusts and foundations to distribute a fund. Phase one of the Youth Investment Fund was a partnership between PBC Children in Need and the Department for Culture, Media and Sport. Central government will partner with lottery distributors. The Arts Council delivered the Thriving Communities funding on behalf of the Department of Health and Social Care. And statutory partners will partner with other independent organisations to deliver in funding. For example, integrated care boards are distributing local NHS grants via community foundations in some locations. Understanding where the grant is coming from will help you better understand what conditions might be attached and whether it is a good fit for your charity. In the last part of Understanding Grant Funding module, we will look at the purpose of the grant. Understanding the purpose is the final piece of the puzzle to help you decide if a grant or grant giving organisation is right for your charity. There are three main purposes we will explore. Grants that achieve the funder's charitable objectives. Grants that deliver against a specific strategy or programme for the funder and grants that deliver a specific programme or outcomes on behalf of the funder. We will start by looking at grants which support charities who deliver against the funder's charitable objectives. These grants are usually from charitable trusts and foundations. These funders will have charitable objectives, just like you do. They might not have a specific strategy to award funds and instead award to charities which deliver against any part of their charitable objectives. For example, what the charity does, either children and young people work, how the charity works, providing advice, information and advocacy, where the charity operates, for example, Peterborough. Some of these funders will want to focus on one or a couple of these aspects. Others will be more open. To build out our picture, let's understand where these fit with other parts of the puzzle conditions, who gives them, and the amount. Trusts and foundations usually give grants like these, usually not the top 300, but the remaining 8,200 might. Conditions may be either restricted or unrestricted. Some will give towards general charitable objectives, and some will prefer to see their funding as contributing to a specific programme or budget. And typically, they will give smaller amounts or grant fewer to a few specific charities. They may, however, be multi-year repeat contributions to your organisation. Putting this onto our grant funding spectrum, they are not particularly large grants and can be restricted or unrestricted. What is important with these funders is to nurture the relationship and see this as a genuine partnership to deliver on shared objectives. Next, we will look at grants that deliver against a specific strategy for the funder. As we work our way through the purposes, the need to check for alignment to your own purpose and strategy increases. There should be really strong synergy to reduce the risk of delivering against funder objectives at the risk of your own. So what do we mean by a grant strategy? Bringing back our diagram from module one, 
funders set their strategy to deliver their purpose and then they decide what objectives they want to fund delivery of. The funding program is equivalent to your delivery model. They will have made decisions on what they want to focus on funding, specific need, audiences, supporting specific approaches or targeting certain geographies. You make a proposal to deliver against these objectives. They are not usually overly prescriptive about how you do this or how much you do. You are the expert in delivering the objectives in this partnership. You will, however, often have to report against their impact measures. Those with larger amounts to distribute tend to have grant strategies, and that includes top 300 trusts and foundations, lottery distributors, central government and statutory partners. The vast majority will be restricted with expected deliverables, Although you are likely to be able to set these, you will need to report against spend and performance. There are exceptions for some grant funders like Lloyd's Foundation, who are happy to make general awards to a specific types of charity in line with their strategy. The amount given can range depending on who is granting, from small amounts to large multi-year grants, particularly from lottery distributors and charitable trusts and foundations like Children in Need and Asme Fairburn. Finally, we'll look at the grants that deliver a specific project on behalf of the funder. These are the most restrictive of the grant purposes we've discussed. Similar to the why for delivery against a policy, except the funder will have determined exactly what they want delivered, when, how, and the outcomes they want to achieve. You are their delivery model in this scenario. These are far more likely to be grants from central government statutory partners and other distributors. They are likely to be very restricted as the parameters have been set. They are not likely to be large as they are time limited and if larger, they might become a contract. Placing this back on our grant funding spectrum, these are usually restricted and they can be larger amounts, but they can also be smaller. These three main purposes could be fit for different reasons in your organisation. Funding that supports the funders' charitable objectives are great for general appeals and contributions to projects, services or your whole organisation. Where you're delivering against the funders' broader strategy, they are great for larger projects, development projects and organisational development. And finally, when you're delivering projects on behalf of the funder, they can be really good for adding capacity to existing services in the short term or to meet an immediate need. Module 2 provided a more in-depth look at what grant funding is, the variables within it, who gives it, and hopefully has provided more foundations for steps to success in grant funding.